Okay, we're going to talk about, we're going to do a quick summary of aspects of Swift UI. So let's get to it. So we're going to talk about what is Swift UI. Swift UI is a user interface framework for building apps on the Apple platform using Swift programming language. It allows developers to create user interfaces using a declarative syntax, which makes it easier to reason about the state of the app and to write testable code. SwiftUI also provides a set of built-in views and layout tools, and it automatically adopts, adapts to different screen sizes and device orientations. With SwiftUI, developers can, re can create native apps for iOS, iPads, Mac OS, Watch OS, and TV OS using the same code base. So let's talk about Swift UI versus UI Kit. Because right now we use a lot of UI Kit and we're transitioning. You know, the industry is transitioning to Swift UI. So Swift UI and UI Kit are both frameworks for building user interfaces on Apple platforms, but they have key differences. Okay. The differences are Swift UI is the newer framework introduced to Apple in 2019 while ui kit has been since 2007 swift ui uses a declarative syntax which means that developers describe the desired state of the user interface rather than the steps to achieve it this makes it easier to reason about the state of the app and to write testable code ui kit on the other hand uses imperative syntax where developers write code that directly manipulates the user interface elements. SwiftUI provides a set of built-in views and layout tools, which makes it easier to build user interfaces that automatically adapt to different screen sizes and device orientations. UIKit does not have built-in views and layout tools, so developers have to manually create and position views. SwiftUI, can be used to create native apps for iOS, iPads, Mac OS, Watch OS, TV OS using the same code base. UI Kit is mainly used to create iOS and iPad OS apps. And developers would need to use different frameworks such as App Kit to create Mac OS apps. In summary, the difference is Swift UI is the modern and simpler framework that allows developers to create user interfaces using a declarative syntax. While UI Kit is more mature and powerful framework that uses an imperative syntax and allows developers to have more control over the user interface elements. So let's talk about declarative and imperative, right? As beginners who are, who are getting into this, you know, I think some of this might be going over some people's heads. So I'm going to discuss declarative and imperative. Declarative, this is an example of a function that is declarative, right? So um, we have, we're passing an array of integers to this function, array of numbers, right? And we want to return only even numbers. We want to filter out the odd numbers, right? Declarative would would be like we use we have this integer, excuse me, we have this array of integers. Excuse me. We have this array of integers, and we apply the higher order function filter to it. So we're not looping through it and we're saying we're not looping through the, the numbers and saying if this is even, you know, return it. Otherwise, don't we aren't doing that we have a higher order function that does all that for us, right? That's, this is what declarative is. Instead of having the loops and everything, we just say filter, right? Let me go back. We just say filter and we want the modulus. If the modulus two is equal to zero, then this is what's going to be returned. Otherwise it's not. That's declarative. Whereas imperative, this is imperative. All the functionality is spelled out. We loop through the numbers. 
if the number is even, we're going to append it to this empty array. Then we return the array with all even numbers appended to it. So we see all of the functionality that it takes to have only even numbers array as the output. That's imperative, right? So again, this is imperative. We loop through it. Declarative will be using a higher order function. Hope that makes sense. Now let's discuss state, right? Because I think that's another thing. When people start talking about Swift UI, we start discussing, we start talking about state and, P, and it confuses people. Because you like, what do you mean state? What? So state refers to the values of the variables and properties that represent the current state of the application at a given point in time. In an app, the state can refer to the data displayed on the screen, the values of the variables, the current screen or view being displayed uses input, the app settings or configurations. For example, in a to-do list app, the state of the app would include the list of tasks, the current task being edited, the, ta the text entered into the task input field and the status of the checkbox indicating if the task is completed or not. Managing the state of the app is, fund is a fundamental aspect of app development, and it's what allows the app to respond to user input, update the UI, perform other actions. In Swift UI, because of the declarative syntax, the state of the app is the source of truth for the views, and the views are updated in response to the change in the state. In summary, the state of the app refers to the current values of the variables and properties that represent the current state of the application at any given point in time. Well, you know, again, he gave the example, we gave the example of um, a list of tasks, right? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, imperative, discuss state. Okay. But let's talk about this state stuff. Can't we, can't the same thing be accomplished using a computed property and did set, right? So when you set, um, when you set a, a variable in your view controller, right? And you want the state of your view to reflect that, you can use did set. So that when that variable is set, something automatically takes place. Um, if you follow, if you've been following my tutorials, um, you probably already know about using did set, right? So, um, but, um, yeah, this approach still has limitations when compared to using state properties in Swift UI. Using a computer property with did set observer is a manual process. You have to write the code to update the user interface every time the variables change. In contrast with Swift UI, the state properties are automatically bound to the views. So the views update automatically when the state changes. When using a computer property, you need to make sure that the code in the did set observer is executed on the main thread to avoid potential issues with thread safety. In contrast, Swift UI uses a system called environment object which ensures that the state is updated on the main thread and it makes it easy to share the state across the views in the app. Computed property with did set observer can become complex and hard to reason about, especially as the app grows. With Swift UI, the state properties are explicit and easy to reason about, and it makes it easy to understand how the state affects the views. In summary, using a computed property with a did set observer can be used to update the user interface when a variable changes. However, it's manual process, it's a manual process, and it can be complex and hard to reason about as the app grows. Whereas in Swift UI, the state properties are automatically bound to the views. It makes the process simple, explicit, and easy, easy to reason about. Okay, so now let's talk about state. Um, we have this at state, right? And it's a property wrapper um, that's used to create state properties. 
Uh, state property is a special kind of property that is used to store and manage the state of an application. When you declare a property with the state wrapper, it creates a storage for the property and an associated binding that allows a property's value to be accessed and modified by Swift UI views. Any changes to the state property will automatically be reflected in the user interface. You can use at state to create a property to store any kind of value, such as text, colors, booleans, arrays. For example, in the following code snippet, we will do we will show something, right? Um, but first, I want to talk about what a property wrapper is first, right? So I just use property wrapper when um, uh, defining what at state property is, right? What's a property wrapper, right? Um, so let, let's, let's talk about property wrappers real quick. A property wrapper is a special kind of property in Swift that wraps another property, providing additional functionality such as data validation, thread safety, key value observing. Um, and I hate using the word in the definition of the word, right? It's not, it's not, it's not a good thing, but trying to uh, describe this and define this as succinctly as possible. Uh, property wrappers were introduced to in Swift 5.1, and they are used to encapsulate common patterns and functionality, making it easier to write and maintain code. A property wrapper is defined as a struct or a class that has a wrapped value property. This property represents the actual value of the wrapped property. Property wrappers can also define additional methods and computed properties to provide additional functionality. So um, this is an example of a property wrapper, right? So we're gonna create an object, right? And this object is going to have, we're gonna be able to set a string value to one of its properties, right? And of course, its property is name. Now, the property wrapper is going to make it so that whenever we set the name property, it is uppercase, right? You see that we have the at uppercase and we define this at uppercase property value and property wrapper, right? And we and when we define it, look, when we define the struct, we before we have the struct, we say property wrapper, struct, uppercase, right? Now we have our computed property right here in wrap value that makes sure that value is changed to an uppercase, right? And then right here, we have the initializer for the property wrapper struct uppercase. Um, yeah, so, and again, wrap value is uppercase, right? So now when we go here, we create an instance of example, get the name, set the max headroom. When we print it, yes, max headroom, that was a show back in the 80s. Anyway, um, we print example.name, guess what? Max headroom is all capital. And we did that with our property wrapper at upper case. Okay, but back to what we're, the other things we're talking about. Okay, so now this is an example of using um, the at state property wrapper, right? And um, in Swift UI, and I, maybe for some of you, this probably doesn't make that much sense. Bear with me because in another video, I'm going to start walking through the use through Swift UI from very basics to all of these property wrappers that come, that are to be used, excuse me, with Swift UI. okay? So right here, we have a value string, a value text, and it is of type string. Uh, default value is empty, right? And so we have this text field and it will be set to text, right? If anywhere in the process of, um, processing content view, this changes. Well, guess what? What's reflecting this text field automatically changes as well. Um, so let's finish talking about at state. The at state wrapper also ensures that 
The state is updated on the main thread, which eliminates potential issues with thread safety. And um, yeah, I think that maybe I'm repeating myself a little bit. So um, you can read this on your own. Um, let's move on to the next. And then let's talk about state object, right? State object is a property wrapper that is used to create state properties that persists across multiple views. And that's the difference. It's similar to state, but it's intended to be used with classes and structs that can form to the observable object protocol. When you declare a property with the state object wrapper, it creates a storage for the property and associated binding and also ensures that the object is shared across multiple views in the hierarchy so that any updates made to the object will be visible to all views that depend on it. For example, in the following code snippet, state object var weather fetcher creates a state property called weather. Um, blah, 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 blah. So let me go back here. State object. Oh, let me go back. Sorry. Okay. Um, so here we go right here, weather fetcher, right? And again, this doesn't make much sense to you right now. Um, so I'm going to kind of breeze through it. We're, I'm going to go through examples where I discuss each one in detail. Okay. So, but that's an example. Um, oh, crap. Stop. Right here. Okay. Uh, state object continued. Um, we also want to ensure the state is updated on the main thread, which eliminates potential issues with thread safety. Um, yes. And yeah, we know that it must conform to observable object protocol. Okay. Binding. Binding is a property wrapper that allows a view to read and write a value owned by another view. It creates a two-way binding system, binding between the wrapped property and the source of truth, which is usually the state object. Okay, and again, that doesn't make sense to you a lot, but it will, I promise, once I walk through some of this. Okay, um, let's talk about observed object, right? Observed object is a property wrapper in Swift UI that is used to pass data between views and view models. Um, I um, It's similar to, to the at state object and it's designed to work with objects that conform to observable object protocol. Uh, when a property is marked with observed object, Swift UI automatically monitors the object for changes and updates the view whenever the object's properties are modified. This allows you to keep your views in sync with your data model without having to manually manage the update process. The observable object protocol requires the objects have a object will change publisher and a did change function. But again, that doesn't mean a lot to you. It will, it will, I promise. Um, Let's talk about um, objects that can form to observable object. As a matter of fact, you know something? I'm going to come back to this in another one. I think this is a lot enough for now. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go more in depth. So, um, yeah, come right back and on to the next.